All right, let me know when you want me to start. Cool. So, Light Show, what have you been doing over the last couple months? So, Light Show, what have you been doing over the last... Um, you know, the usual, uh, traveling back and forth to Australia, um, uh, doing stupid shit. Um, I was in Rio de Janeiro fairly recently, um, kicking some triad, triad ass, um, and saving one of my contacts. Um, and, uh, Light Show's been taking it uh, quite as, quite slow recently, so... Um, there's not been that ma much work for him lately. Yeah, so in this sort of lull, you feel... I don't know, like one day you wake up with like a fever, and, and like a runny nose, and you, you feel like absolute crap, like there's a virus, and you're like, ugh. You, you go to the mirror, and you look at it, and your eyes are puffy, you're, um... Your your face is a bit swollen. Your your horns have a little bit of um, pus leaking out. That's kind of gross. You you clean up, and yeah, you just feel like absolute crap. What what do you want to do? First of all, my horns are leaking pus, and I can't have that. My style needs to be perfect. So I break out my tattoo cleaning kit and begin cleaning off my horns. And then I head down to the local Suffer Shack and buy a pack of aspirin and a bottle of Jack. And then I head back home again to deal with my less than favorable state. Uh, alcohol, the best medicine. <laughs> um, so yeah, you um, try to um, use the aspirin. Like The headache sort of goes, but you, you still feel really groggy. And this continues over like a week. And it, and it doesn't feel like it's going away. I probably give Axel some shit for making loud noises and cursing, and I tell him to just buzz off and bother cause her some instead. So, um, yeah, he, he buzzes off, and yeah, do you seek medical attention, or do you keep trying to tough it out? Uh, after a week, you said, hmm... Would I really bother with that? Um, I, probably uh, it's going to be a scene where I'm heading in to like, assist with bouncing at my, the nightclub my fixer was working at that evening. Uh, and he, he's just straight up, no, you ain't working this evening, what the fuck's wrong with you? And here, take this number to this guy, and sh see what the fuck's up. Yeah, because you, you, like, you try and clean up, but you look really under the weather. And you've got, like, body, like, ten or something, don't you? Body seven, strength ten. Yeah, body seven. Like, you usually don't get this sick. You're kind of, like, brushes off you, so this is quite strange to you. But yeah, uh, I look up some uh, assistance and such uh, to see what 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 the frag is up with me. So yeah, you um eventually get a guy called Doctor Jonathan Rivers, and you're waiting in like a clinic at two a.m. in like Renton. There's like an orc who's got a um shiv through his leg, just kind of sitting on the other side of the clinic going oh, oh, Are you sure I'm only, like, are you sure I can't be put ahead? And like, I'm sorry sir, we're very busy today and I was like, a, a pregnant elf just kind of like freaking out in the um, corner and it looks like this place is overstaffed a lot. So, um, Eventually, it comes time to a uh, Mr. What, what name did you give the um, clinic? 
I would probably have given them... Hmm. Yeah, I'd probably have given them my fake sin, so James Smith. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, the doctor can see you now. And uh, like a nurse says this, human woman, um, looks a bit short, you know, dressed like a, you know, nurse. Uh, and mm. your hand, and, um, she, she collects your, you know, clipboard with all the stuff you had to write down, all the symptoms you're feeling, all that kind of stuff. And um, she leads you into the back room and, and you see a doctor. He's a, he's a dwarf. He's standing on what looks to be like a, I don't want to say a high chair, but like a, a stool so he can get a good look at you and says, ah, Mr. Smith, please um, t take, take a seat and tell me about what you've been feeling. So, you know, Doc, I've been pretty much a shipper, shummer, you know, but these last few days I've been like, I've been popping aspirin, I've been shugging the jack, I've been, I've been doing my morning pull-ups, I've been doing everything's fine as always, as you know, Doc, um, but just lately, I don't know, uh, as you can see, and I, and I probably just wipe some puss off of one of my horns and I this ain't what it used to be and I had these tattoos for quite some time the dude tell me it ain't gonna be some issues with my tattoos and now I'm having this and I'm feeling bad and I don't know what's wrong doc you got you gotta give it to me am I dying am, please don't tell me I'm dying okay okay it's probably not serious um o open wide yep tusks are in order no visible inflammation of the mouth. Uh, and he says, uh, can you please extend your arm? And he goes, no real... Uh, have you taken any recent bullet wounds or combat injuries which would leave a scar? I mean, I hate to tell it to you, Doc, but, uh, you know, living the troll life, people... People be pretty angry. Although I, I feel like I recuperated pretty fine, if you ask me. Yes, it's just that I can see a, a slight burn mark on your upper dermal plating. However, it's healed quite nicely, um, along with the rest of it. Um, yes, there seems to be some discharge coming from. You said you had a tattoo on your horn. Um, may I inquire where you got this from? You know, it was a fairly legitimate back alley tattoo artist uh, you see I was off in China and uh, yeah you know it seemed like a good deal at the time and they, they've been pretty swell ever since I don't know doc hmm yes no, and, and he just continues like giving you a checkup and he says well <clears throat> you're not dying that's for sure uh, however, you are suffering from something in the medical profession we like to call disco fever. Now, uh, have you been feeling oh, the need dark, to... Oh, uh, that sounds bad. Uh, is it like jungle fever? Uh, no, um, may I inquire, are you awakened uh, in any sense of the word? I mean, yeah, but... I and have I you been feeling I, I, the urge to? I don't know to... how to put it. I, I, I've been I'm pretty fast, pretty good, is what I can say about how I am awakened. And uh, have you been feeling the urge to move around and dance? I mean, I always feel the urge to move around to dance, but these last few days, uh, I ain't that much. Sorry, my phone. That's cool. Do you need to take that? No, it's cool. Cool. So he says, hmm, well, usually I'd say it's just a uh, virus. However, as you, you were probably said to you, awakened, uh, I'm going to assume adept. Uh, it doesn't look like you display 
you know, latent magical abilities in the form of mysticism. And like he goes on and talks about like mystic adepts for a bit. Um, then he like sidetracked and comes back to the point. Um, says, well, I, I would like to give you the good old fashioned bed rest and, you know, take it easy. However, this is, um, it's, it's not a physical disease. It's a psychosomatic one. Uh, you need to travel. Oh, I, I've once heard about a guy named Jimmy that had a psychosomatic disease. They say he be, went all cuckoo and never came back, Doc. Y y you sure you're able to treat me, Doc? Because I um, can't go all cuckoo and disappear. I got people depending on me, you know? No, I can assure you, you're not going to go cuckoo. You just have to... Let... Have you been... F Hmm, how do I, how do I put this? Are you in a industry or profession that has a lot of stress? I mean, I work pretty much only nights, and I don't get much sleep when I bounce. Uh, you know, nightclubs, normal clubs, pubs, pretty much anywhere where people might not behave. And have you been feeling? When you are in the nightclub and and all that sort of area, how long has it been since you last let your hair down, so to speak? I mean, you know, Doc, as you probably see, I update my uh, hair color like every so other day. <laughs> um, uh, I, I just look like another side. Um, during this slow period of um you know, your job and Shadowrunning, you've been feeling less enthused by the Shadowrun dancing, like, not Shadowrun dancing, the Seattle dancing and all the communities in Seattle because you feel like you're getting bored of them. And, and the doctor will say, have you been feeling boredom when you would partake in activities that usually excite you? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to write you this, and he like pulls out a piece of paper and starts shoving out and says, now there's no drug I can give you that will help. Um, the aspirin you've been taking probably may have helped with the headaches a bit. However, that's probably just a placebo. Um, what I'm going to tell you is you need to take a holiday. So Go to you, you, Doc, you telling me aspirin doesn't work against headaches? Not for this one, no. So, you'll need to take a holiday to wherever you see fit, whatever your heart desires, and then follow your heart. That, I know it doesn't sound too medically profound or anything, but with cases such as these and when you're dealing with magical individuals, that's sort of the case occasionally. Now, if that doesn't work, uh, we can take some more extreme measures. I want you to come back in a month if it hasn't been fixed, and I'll give it a better look, maybe transfer you to the surgeon, but that's all I can do for now. Lightyear like kind of looks at the dock for a second and kind of hangs his head because he's still feeling pretty rough. And then he kind of shrugs his shoulder and goes, I talk, see you in a month, I guess. And just proceeds to leave. Uh, next we have Mrs. Uh, Jameson, yes, uh, come in. And like the pregnant elf walks in as you walk out and she kind of gives you a look. Um, and yeah, so the doctor has told you a holiday would be the best bet. Is there a specific place where Mr. Smith would like to go on holiday? <clears throat> you know, I was pondering about this. Um, probably there is a place, but I'm not that great with the... Uh, how the world has changed in terms of what nations you should probably want to visit. Um, so possibly um, uh, a Cantonese region or just hmm.
I'm, I'm going to say Hong Kong is probably a place Light Show would like to visit. Just because of all the neon lights and all that jazz. Hong Kong. Oh yeah, booking one trip to Hong Kong. And you told me you pissed off the triads, did you? Uh, yeah, I pissed off the triad head in Rio de Janeiro. Okay, so that's probably not going to carry over. Um... Which is good. Uh, cool. So you, you know, order a ticket online for Hong Kong, just like a week holiday. You've got enough savings in your bank from all the shadow running to afford it. I'll just put it onto your um, lifestyle. And um, yeah, the flight is a bit iffy. You're given an orc seat instead of a troll seat because, you know, the troll seats are on first class and you don't have enough money for first class. So it's really squished up tight. And there are a bunch of people. It's like not a pleasant trip. You you still feel like absolute crap. But um, yeah, you you sort of feel like this wanderlust inside of you is getting a bit sort of like relieved. You the breath of fresh, in quotation marks, air is is sort of helping. So you touch down in Hong Kong, and you see the beautiful Victoria Harbour, the massive Wuxing Sky Tower with its feng shui, and like you get off at the airport and take the public transit system through this massive sort of corridor where there's people selling bootleg cyberware, chrome, um, arrows popping up, neon lights everywhere, just a massive hustle and bustle of a cyberpunk dystopia. And it's, it's a massive tourist trap. You see like people wearing like a US... U, CAS bandana on their head and say, well, 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 darling, you know, I don't really want to buy it, but this man is saying this comlink has the best connection in all of Hong Kong. And like, that's just like, you're hearing snippets of conversation. Some of them you can understand. Some of them are in completely different languages. Um, Cantonese, Japanese, um, Russian, even get a bit of Greek in there for some reason. And yeah, as this sort of like neon landscape is like brushing forward and through you, where does your heart want you to go? I want to find a by troll with a low lifestyle standards acceptable hotel and then I decide to find a nightclub like a real hard hard style rave club hard style rave i like it all right so you find this sort of okay looking lifestyle hotel you can't actually figure out the name it's like in city speak it's got it's okay like i call it the jin ching i like it and like you enter and there's no real staff waiting on you. You go beep, boop, 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 beep onto a con- console, say, staying for six days and seven nights. Um, you know, enter your troll and all that kind of stuff, all your needed amenities, and it pops out like this little RFID chip for you and gives you um, the instructions. You're on the 15th floor of this big, it's like a big tower. And you rise on the elevator, it's quite a slow rise. Um, and eventually you get to this really cramped room. Like, even for like a, tro- a human, it would be considered cramped. Um, it's basically three rooms. Each of them are like a couple meters wide and across. Um, there's a fridge, like a mini fridge, a food preparation area, a bed, and a toilet with like a sink that's all in the it. same room probably as well no oh, no like there's like rooms but it's not good rooms like they're very this room is just for the bed this room is just for food preparation and like there's a aro screen where you can look at stuff and the toilet area is just like just a bathroom it's very cramped very sort of you kind of um, have to walk into the toilet backwards to get in, otherwise you're kind of fucked. Yeah, and like, there's no real windows. 
Okay, and um, yeah, so you do that, and yeah, then you find the hardest, raviest nightclub you can. Um, again, city speak, because you're going real down low. You're not going like to like the walled city or anything. You're just trying to find some place where you can really let your hair loose. And yeah. you walk in, and it's kind of music just blasting away at you. And like it's a throng of people, and there's alcohol all over the joint. What do you do? First of all... You don't want to look like a piece of dreck out of place, so I identify the music by spending some time because it's probably some sort of shitty cover by a actual famous song. Uh, so uh, after spending some time listening to both the tempo of the music and uh, the accords and all that nice stuff, and uh, understanding that, yep, this is actually a cover, Lightshow then proceeds to break it down like he does back in the UKAS. Yeah, it's uh, actually a cover of a Mer- Maria Mercurial song, uh, First Planet from the Sun, and it's like this, you know, 12 year old kid's remix of it. It's actually quite good, but you know, it's not the OG sort of song. So you start to break down and like get funky and like you, you feel a bit dizzy and like the colors start to blur and it all just sort of meshes into one. And like eventually the music starts to fade out and you're in this sort of euphoria. You're conscious, like you. you I want to say euphoria, but like you're conscious and unconscious at the same time. Your mind is sort of drifting as your body is just raving. Uh, however, you're aware of your surroundings, but not really. It's a weird feeling. And then you get this sound in your ear that just says, why do we dance? Now, what is light shows most memorable moment as a child whether it be good or for ill just the you know strongest memory he has of his childhood um the most strongest memory he has of his childhood is probably when he was still just living on the streets um not actually just yet uh, being trained to be what he is today um, it, it's probably when I actually had a name for this fella uh, planned up, but I don't remember it off the top of my head. Um, so I, I imagine Lightshow to have been living on the streets and not actually aware of that he was awakened for quite some time. And then been taken in uh, after some time by a Cantonese, or should you say Chinese man perhaps? Uh, and uh, was more or less trained because he was taken or lifted up from the Redmond City slum life where he, it was do or die probably more or less every single day for him. And yeah. Uh, cool. So you're back on the streets of Redmond. You feel smaller, but you also don't feel sick anymore. That, like, that is just lifted from you. And you're looking around, and it's your old sort of hang. Cool. So, you know, all that kind of stuff. You hear, like, four motorcycles coming out of nowhere. Like, and because they're electric motors, you only hear, like, the tires on the ground, and you hear a screech. What do you want to do? I dodge behind a dumpster or something similar of some kind because this is obviously a drive-by yep obviously so as you do that you um hear like the um the motorcycles turn the corner and you hear like just smgs open up at like the street front you were standing in front of and glass shattering people screaming people laughing maniacally and it's all over in an instant and and you look up and there's this man standing in front of you and like you're on the ground covering your head because you know bullets don't fuck around and he's just 
sitting, like standing there, untouched by all the chaos, and he just holds out his hand to you. Uh, I imagine it's probably the same old man that appeared to me uh, back during my first initiation that was just sitting on the tree stump uh, in that park over in Tacoma. Uh, and he's just standing here again, still looking old and shit and wise and stuff. Yeah, um, so, he looks so, wise as hell. Yeah, so there's probably a tad bit of confusion running off of Lightshow's face because yeah, I, I, I can't imagine he, he realizes he doesn't have his tattoos anymore but at the same time uh, nothing feels off other than the fact that this man was just being dope and dodging an entire bullet storm so he I believe he hesitates for a moment before he kinda as he reaches out uh, to grab the man's hand, he goes, That's some groovy moves, bro. The old man sort of smiles to you, and like he just says one word, Why do we dance? And like the second your hand touches his, you're pulled away, and like your body like feels like it's moving through space. Um, however, you feel like you're not moving at all. Um, except you're standing up now. You're in a club, and now, who was Light Show's first love? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I'm going to say that it was probably a. Hmm. It was probably a, a orc uh, that. Um, Probably, I'm, I'm pondering if it was during his time living in Redmond on the streets or in his time in the Hong Kong period of his life. I'm probably going to say that it was a, a talisman monger, uh, a orc talisman monger. Uh, her name was Juliet. And... What what he probably enjoyed the most with her was that she had a flair for the extravagant as well, which is probably why he treasures his uh, tattoos and such as much as he does, because I believe she found that to be one of his more appealing aspects. Cool. So, sh like you cl like you blink. And you're no longer on the streets of Redmond anymore. You're in Hong Kong. And you're being trailed by... The, like, compared to you, she looks absolutely tiny. Um, but she's pulling your hand along. And you're just kind of, like, following along um, goofily through, like, the upper class areas of Hong Kong, the higher city. And you look out over Victoria Harbour. And there's this beautiful um, sunset just bathing the entire city in this nice pink glow and it's hitting her face and making her hair look like absolutely perfect and you're just trapped in that image and like she's just dragging you along the city um how did you lose her because i'm assuming she's still not there like at this current time in your life that is true um I imagine for there to have been some sort of tragic event between the two of them that kind of turned Lightshow into the cold and less friendly person that he is today. So there was probably a break in slash mugging of her store where it was probably just some junky drackhead. No, probably uh, uh, the junky was in the store as Lightshow was showing up and he had just shivved her several times uh, so she was probably just lying there bleeding out on the floor and yeah that's probably the scene where I enter yeah basically um she's pulling you toward you and then you feel this like stone in your gut and and you're like dreading something but you can't put your finger on it you feel a sense of deja vu but you're not sure what's happening and then like you blink and 
she's dragging you towards a talismonger shop and the lights are on even though she's not working there but she doesn't look quizzical at all her face is completely happy carefree and says wait like she says in like this chime of a voice um i'm not even going to try and like do it but she says wait here i'll be back in just a sec i just need to grab my wallet um and she or credit sec sorry uh and she walks into the um that's the shop and you see a silhouette in the window which isn't her what do you want to do i can imagine uh, as it is uh, that uh, she she leaves my hand, uh, 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 and I feel the wet feeling just to have this dream of a more impact. So I look down into my hand, uh, and I see that it's dripping with blood. Yes, and, it is. And as I look up, I, I now notice that the door is ajar, and the handle it looks to have been torn off. And I I hear the clashing crashing of glass inside, and eyes bolt inside the the second first second I guess. And so, that's, sorry. So like yeah, you bolt inside, and you see her like um, stab wounds all over her. Uh, it looks much more gory than actually what happened. But you see her like faces cut up, her throat is slashed, just all these horrible wounds inflicted. And you look at the like the junkie who did it, but you can't see his face, and he just sort of fades away into nothingness. And you just hear her sobbing over and over again. I kind of imagine that the junkie turns towards me, and his face isn't actually um, giving me a resemblance. It's just a wispy piece of smoke where his face should have been, with uh, two glimmering uh, small red dots. Probably they resemble probably rubies, but Lycha wouldn't know them to have been rubies as they look at me with this faint glow behind them, and. There is just a brief. Uh, it, it's kind of like. Uh, I'm probably, as the scene, I'm probably filled with rage and grief at the same time as she's struggling for air and such uh, where she is. So she reaches up to touch your face and her last words to you are, why do we dance? And then you, you blink again and like you feel tears rushing to your eyes and you're in a different place. Now, what was Light Show's first kill? Light Show's first kill was probably um, during his time when he was in Hong Kong. Like, his first real train kill, not, not the, like, killing to survive or accidentally killing someone to protect yourself, but actually you are meant to kill this man for no other reason than killing him was probably when he was working for Ichiwa Nobino, uh, the man that uh, picked him up and began training him uh, during his... Uh, uh, when he was in Hong Kong. And... It, it, well, Lightshow probably didn't understand at the time was that he was on more probably only being trained because of the fact that he's a troll, he's intimidating. This was a little bit ways back, so trolls were probably a bit more scary than they are today. Uh, and there was this man that probably had swindled Mr. Nobino uh, on some um, uh, money or done something with the business that belongs to him. And it, it was a... Um, a public execution more or less but for Mr. Nobel's business partner so uh, I imagine Light Show just walks into a meeting with these well-dressed uh, uh, 
Chinese, Japanese, Korean, uh, and a mixture of such businessmen in this fine room, all dressed in business suits. And um, I imagine uh, Mr. Nobuno just pointing from his seat on one man and say, That's the one. You know what to do. And Lightshow just proceeds to take uh, his sledgehammer and just, as the man is sitting, brings it down over his head and just repeatedly smashing him as he's sitting in his chair until there's more or less nothing left of either him or the chair. There's just blood and gore filling yeah, the entire you, room. Like Every hit of the hammer just sprays this warm crimson liquid all over your face and body and it, it just sort of like the blood on your face and hands is no longer hers but his and you just descend into this rage filled like beast basically um harnessing what you felt seconds ago into this just outlet of like smashing into the guy's skull um and yeah um would you have run away after that, or what would you, like, because you said it was public, so, or, or was it, like, semi-public, you're showing it, it to it, people it, who it, it was a semi-public, as in, there is no actual recording of this, it was just the businessmen in that room that Mr. Norman wanted to show that this is what happens to you if you cross me again. So, as such, it it isn't something to hold against. Or that became an issue for Lightshow because he was still in Mr. Nobuno's service. But it was probably at the same time uh, something that happened fairly recently after Juliet died. Uh, so it, it, at the same time it probably was an outlet for his uh, emotions that he still had pent up inside of him. So the scene cool. was probably even more intimidating than it would have been. So you're just sitting there with like this sledgehammer in hand and just panting away because you use a lot of energy smashing the guy's face in and you're just kind of like <sighs> and and then again you just hear this noise why do we dance and you blink again but this time it's not a memory you're just in this area and nothing is happening you move your body and you feel nothing it feels like you're totally numb. And like over and over again, this whispered notion is just flowing over you. And like, it's just, why do we dance? Why do we dance? And then like this somber and deep tone just fills the room, brushing away the like others, like there were whispers. And it says, why do you dance? Uh, um, there's probably a brief whisper at first. It, 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 I, I imagine this being like a... Do you say ex existential? Um, uh, as Lightshow is perceiving this, it doesn't feel like is he's in his own body, but m probably more perceiving himself and this wispy form uh, conversing. And probably uh, as Lightshow sees his own body, there's just probably just the faintest of whispers uh, coming out of his lips that goes to forget. And, and like, as you say, forget, ev like all the noise and like questions just disappear and it just sort of echoes, forget, 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 forget. And like suddenly, bam, all of the memories just like rush into you as a wave. You're killing your first kit, like kill. You're in the streets again, fighting for your life. There's, um... Uh, Juliet on the ground dying, um, you're in Australia fighting for your life, you're in Rio de Janeiro, like, angering triads, you're in Seattle, you're, like, your entire life is hitting you at the exact same time, and this voice just says, like, it, it takes a moment for it to happen as, like, this thing, and says, you dance to forget, you dance to run away, no more. Now, you dance to live. And, like, 
as it says the word live, you just like your eyes like jerk open and you're in like this back alley of a Hong Kong um, nightclub. It's not even the nightclub you were in. That's like kilometers away from you, according to your comlink GPS. You're just covered in alcohol and other various like fluids and, and you just kind of in a daze you don't know what you've done over the last however many hours you've been gone but you don't feel sick anymore you you feel alive and just this passion inside you this life that you haven't felt and you sort of feel as if a weight has been lifted from you if that makes sense mm -hmm. so i i kind of imagine as lightshow kind of collects himself in this alley he kind of looks around there's probably a hobo pissing pissing against the wall just uh, um, centimeters away from where he's sitting so he he, he kind of stands up he, he gives this hobo the look whereas he, he, the hobo is slightly startled as he, he begins jogging off from the troll that apparently is no longer asleep slash passed out. Uh, and Lightshow kind of brings out a pack of cigarettes or similarly uh, from uh, one of his pockets. Uh, and as he kind of does the, the typical tapping that he does to bring one of them out he realizes that he's empty so he just goes ah i guess it's just another bad habit where the frag am i yeah so you're easily like able to find where your hotel is and all that kind of stuff um, yeah over uh, after some time i imagine i find my way back and like there's this note on um your like bed and you're sure no one's opened the door or window and like there's no entry because um like as you enter it says good morning uh mr smith did you have a nice night um you know the ai sort of says and the, um you check the security logs no one's been inside and and you open this note and it's so um it's juliet's handwriting in a letter which has been sealed like sealed um in like this very ornate envelope and it says like to uh whatever light show's real name is yeah it says to jack uh streets so what would you like to do with the envelope would you like to open it and read the letter or is it best left unopened He probably sits down by the table or whatever is left in this apartment to sit down by. And brings forth an ashtray and he has, grabs a cigarette and he sits down looking at the envelope for quite some time, not uh, eyeing it, f feeling the paper. He has no clue what to do with the letter to check its authenticity, but he, he he does this just to confirm that it's not actually a dream of what he's doing. Yeah, uh, like it doesn't feel like a dream. It feels depressingly real. Yeah, so... Uh, I believe he opens it up, brings the paper out, but it doesn't really begin reading it per se. He, he just takes the envelope that it was in and puts the envelope on fire uh, and places it in the ashtray. He doesn't take and put the letter on fire. He just wants to see if this burns and leaves ashes so there's something remaining of it. And it burns like normal paper does. Yeah, and he, he, he begins reading the, what I'm going to assume to be electronic paper, and 
Oh no, it's like real paper, and it looks like it's been written by someone with ink and a quill. Hot damn. And like, as you're reading it, like, you smell faintly the perfume that um, Juliet used to wear, and like, it's written in the language you and Herbo spoke, and it has the same sort of um, writing style that she's spoken, so... Like, the second you start reading it, you know it's her just from your instincts. And it effect like, I don't want to say it word for word, but it effectively says, um, no matter what happens, I will always be there for you, um, even when I'm not. And you shouldn't let what has happened in the past hold you back from the future. There is probably... For the faintest of moments, you you know those movie scenes where a tear r r drops from the eye really quickly as it rolls down the cheek. There is probably that moment where he kind of just places his finger to cover it up, as if some if someone would have been watching him. And assuming that's the end of the letter, Lightyear then proceeds to light this letter on fire, uh, and then he says. Goodbye, Juliet. And as you do this, you feel this just sort of optimistic energy start flowing through you, and you feel alive, and you feel as if you can do, like, you're not being held back by your memories. You can push forward, make new ones, fall in love again, maybe, become rich. Um, just the world is your oyster, and it's just invigorating that you've left this final goodbye behind, but you don't forget them. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you are now an initiate level two. Or whatever initiate grade you need to yeah, be. Yeah, initiate level two. Hopefully that was a wild ride that you enjoyed. You get back to Seattle whenever you want. And yeah. <laughs>